Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Busy morning for police on the north and southbound lanes of I-37. That's left two people dead. Details on that crash coming up next. And taking a live look out at the roads with Trans God as Jonathan Cotto was explaining. Big scene overnight. We're going to break it all down. That is I-35 and Randolph. If you are out and about today, try to avoid that area. We have the latest from police on what actually happened. For now, good morning, 6 o'clock this morning, Saturday, August 7th. Thank you so much for starting your morning, your weekend with us. How was the last couple of days off? Yeah, it was good. You know, I got four to five inches of rain on my, on my, what is it called, my rain gauge. Rain gauge. On Thursday, Justin Horn. Yep. It was, I mean, it, that was a, a good, yep. good soaking Another we got. Another good soaking. I bet your garden is in great shape. It's in great shape. I believe it. I believe it. I, it yes, uh, we've gotten some good rain the last couple months. That's going to end now. Ooh. We're going to move into more of a summer-like pattern, which is to be expected. We've been waiting for this for a while, not necessarily wanting it to happen, but we knew it would at some point. 75 right now at the airport, 73 burning stage, 78 Castroville, 76 in Hondo. We do have some clouds out there. If you're heading to the beach, I know school's starting soon. If you're making one last trip down there, uh, forecast for the beach looks great today. Temperatures in the low 90s. Uh, the water temperatures at 86. You can't beat that. And uh, rip currents should be on the low end. Thankfully, not much in the way of rain. In fact, we're not expecting rain showers down there. For us here in San Antonio, temperatures up around 94 for a high today. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Hot, humid. Heat index will be up near 100. Some in interesting statistics looking back over the past couple of months. We're going to share those with you coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. All right, Justin Horn, thank you so much. Well, taking a look out what we were talking about earlier, I-35 at Randolph. Look at that. A lot of red lights. It's basically a standstill. We know there was a head-on overnight crash on 35. Uh, police still investigating. Clearly, road work still being done. Our Jonathan Cotto is going to be joining us live later in the show. And, and we do know that two people were actually killed, according to the PIO on scene of this accident, where eventually ended up, the accident ended at, as, at I-35 and Eisenhower, where that driver going the wrong way on 35 hit an SUV. Two women were in that SUV, both died on the impact. Uh, so it, this is a developing story, obviously impacting traffic this morning. And like Max said, Jonathan Cotto will give us an update in just a little bit. I need to inform you that under Texas law, the judgment of conviction and the sentence of death is mandated by the verdict of the jury, which is subject to automatic appeal. It is now official. Otis McCain has been sentenced to the death penalty for shooting and killing SAPD detective Benjamin Marconi. Jurors deliberated for about seven and a half hours yesterday before determining the final punishment. Now, that punishment phase lasted seven days with the prosecution presenting 15 witnesses. The defense calling on sit with six witnesses. This is the first death penalty issued in Bear County in five years. No date has been set for McCain's execution. And it is important to mention McCain will be allowed to appeal his sentence. And if you want to see the full coverage of what happened yesterday during the last day of the punishment phase, you can find it right now on KSAT.com. You can also find the entire coverage of the trial and the most memorable moments. Just look over this story on your homepage. Now to the latest on the pandemic here at home. We are still in the severe risk level and it appears to be worsening. We continue to see a rise in COVID cases here in Bear County. Metro Health reporting our seven day average at about 1300 new COVID cases. Now this is a 4% increase since just Thursday. Hospitalizations also rising 1000 COVID patients in our local hospitals, 273 in the ICU, 158 on ventilators. As for vaccination rates, 63.9% of Bear County fully vaccinated. Well, Bamsey says they are now taking on additional trauma patients to help ease the local health care system who are taking who are dealing with COVID-19 patients. According to a press release, they are, quote, receiving all interfacility transfers of injury patients who require a higher level of care from across the trauma region, end quote. This marks the third time Bamsey has taken on higher percentage of trauma patients since the pandemic started. In your morning headlines, the Biden administration expected to unveil new Belarus sanctions on Monday. This comes as it marks the one-year anniversary of the Eastern European country's disputed election. 
That disputed election sparking massive protests across Belarus. The country has been in political and social turmoil since then, with continued violent crackdowns by President Alexander Lukashenko. So far, not clear what President Biden's new sanctions would mean and would target. Immigration and Customs Enforcement say they have found an underground tunnel running from beneath a home in Mexico to California. They say it's 180 feet, 83 feet long and has electricity, ventilation, a rail system and a hoist. It extends three feet into U.S. territory, but it's 20 feet underground with no way out on the U.S. side. ICE says investigators believe drug traffickers have been using the tunnel. And with the Biden administration, they're now extending the pause on student loan repayments. Now, President Joe Biden announcing the big move yesterday in the statement. The president says there is still more work to be done on the economic recovery front. And for that reason, student loan payments are held, at least interest payments held until at least January 31st of 2022. The pandemic relief benefit was set to expire on September 30th. After this unprecedented 19 month suspension, now this pause on payments and the interest waiver only apply to federally held loans. Olympic history on the track for Team USA as the star studded men's basketball team. Well, they win big, win gold, taking on France. ABC's Morgan Norwood shows us the big moments. Allison Felix is used to breaking records on the track, but in Tokyo, the 35 year old is making history as the most decorated female track and field Olympian of all time, earning bronze in the 400 meter for a total of 10 career Olympic medals. It was just much bigger than running. Just two years ago, Felix survived pregnancy complications that could have killed her and her daughter. The physical complications um, along with just the hardships, I think that's what gave me the most doubt of, you know, could I ever get back to myself? And so to me, um, you know, tonight was really special because I, I do feel like myself again, and it's, um, it's been a battle to get back to that. Staying on the track, it was silver for Team USA in the women's 4x100 relays, finishing behind Jamaica, Italy taking gold in the men's race. The star-studded Team USA men's basketball team looking to retain the gold they won in Rio back in 2016. France playing for gold for the first time since 2000. Kevin Durant dominating to lead Team USA to victory in the team's fourth consecutive gold medal. I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be a part of this group for life and uh, to bring this goal back home. Like you said, a lot of people back home doubted us. A lot of people said that it was going to be tough for us to win. Uh, and to be honest, they really don't matter, but you hear the noise so much. And we came together and finished it off, which was, uh, which was the perfect ending for us. So, you know, we're looking forward to bringing this back home. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. And big shouts to the Spurs. Coach Pop, Keldon Johnson, both getting gold medals. All right, speaking of gold medals, taking a look at that final count. Well, as of right now, the total USA, USA, 102 total medals. That's 34 gold, 36 silver, 32 bronze. Second place right now, China, 38. They're leading the gold count. Leading the gold count. 29 silver, 17 bronze. The unofficial team of Russia in third, Great Britain in fourth, and the host country, Japan, Coming in at number five, so there you go. Go Team USA. Go Team USA, 608, 77 degrees out. Well, get your wallet ready because there are some deals happening this month still ahead. We tell you what you can buy this month without having to break the bank. And of course, it is Saturday. That means we got a brand new episode of Texas Eats, a preview. Next, are we starting seafood for this morning? Ooh, is that mahi mahi? I like that. Uh, no, or is that tuna? It's tuna. Oh, I don't really know the difference. But we'll learn. <laughs> it's all delicious. Taking a look outside with live cam. 77 degrees at 6.09 this morning. Man, it felt muggy when I stepped outside. Justin Horn is in for Sarah Spivey. He'll have our full weekend forecast when we come back. cocktail sauce on top as well. Yeah, You're some people like to slurp those out of the shell. Obviously you do. I'm, Are you a fork guy? I'm a little more civilized, I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting, getting outclassed here by Paul. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Only animals slurp them off the shell, okay? <laughs> Cheers to you. There you go. The shrimp and oysters, a great way to start your meal out here at Saltwater Grill. 
The shrimp are ready to eat. You've got to peel them yourself, but they're already deveined, ready to rock and roll, and those oysters are absolutely delicious, especially with their house-made cocktail sauce and some horseradish. Talk to me about what's going on with this dish. Yeah, it's a, it's a six ounce sesame tuna uh, coated with black and white sesame seeds. Nice. Uh, quick sear in the pan with some sesame oil. Uh, hit it with some fresh lemon at the end, throw it on the cutting board, slice it up, and you're done. It's That's fantastic. all you need, baby. That sounds good. good. All right, we're going to go for it. Yeah, we're going to double dip. Those... Cheers, sir. Cheers. Tuna. You in? You know seafood? I love seafood. I'm, I'm from Corpus Christi. I'm from the coast. I absolutely love seafood. What's your favorite dish? Um, pretty much anything. Okay. Shellfish. Shellfish? Anything shellfish. All right, what about you, Justin Horn? Big seafood guy? I, and this may surprise you, I am not. But I, I do like fish mostly. Okay. What's but your go-to fish? Ooh, I don't know. I do like mahi. It's good. But mo most fish. Most fish. fish. Mahi? Just, <laughs> mahi, one. mahi. Just, just one. Just one. We just want one mahi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, guys, the temperature is starting to heat up. We know that. The average begins to creep up this time of year. In fact, this is, on average, the warmest time of the year. 97 is where we typically peak here in August. So, with that being said, let's look back at the last couple months. July, almost completely below average, minus one day. So far in August, below average every day. So we've had 34 consecutive days at or below average when we're talking about the temperatures. That is incredible. Not a record, but incredible nonetheless. We've had a really good summer so far, but I have a feeling it's about to change. Look at the high temperatures today. Now keep in mind the average is 97, so this is still a little bit below average. But we're going to see these numbers start to creep up some, especially as we get into next week. The heat index, that's the number in yellow. Notice it will be up near 100. There's enough humidity out there to generate some heat indices 100 or above most of the area. And that's not only us, that's much of Texas, places like Dallas, also in the same boat. Heat index around 101. There, Houston, the heat index 103. Here's the setup. We have high pressure just to our west. The good news is that this thing doesn't come sit right over top of us and create one of those big heat highs, but it will be sort of floating around. And there's nothing that gets me too excited about rainfall in the foreseeable future. Nothing down the line. It's pretty much just uh, quiet with high pressure. Not again over top of us, but in control. And as we look outside right now, some morning clouds, temperatures at 75 at the airport, 78 stints and 77 Kelly. And uh, 77 over at Randolph, southerly winds anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. 74 Comfort, 75 Bandera, 76 in Hondo, 78 right now down there at Stinson. And temperatures are in the 70s area-wide. Pretty typical for an August morning. So too are the dew points in the mid-70s. These numbers will come down some this afternoon, but again, not enough to uh, get rid of any sort of heat index. It, uh, it'll be there today. Uh, the forecast calls for sunny skies. In fact, we've had quite a uh, bit of cloud cover the last few days. That's not going to be the case today. 94, your high temperature. Again, the southerly breeze, 10 to 15. Let's look down the line now. And I mentioned that high pressure sort of drifting around. We've got another one here to the east. And in general, it sort of just kind of takes control of the forecast. Again, it's not terribly strong. We're not going to see uh, big time heat, but it's uh, going to be hot enough. Uh, with temperatures likely in the 90s uh, going into next week. And, and really, again, for the foreseeable future. Now, I know it's back to school on Monday. For some, for some, uh, we'll get those temperatures up around at 96, mostly sunny skies. And I should point out, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we could see a few coastal showers, some of the sea breeze showers uh, developing, and then just a 10% chance of rain Thursday into Friday, and I'm not too optimistic about that either. It'll be a, a stray shower for Lucky. Otherwise, uh, this is very, uh, very typical of August. So okay. we're, we're finally feeling what it should feel like, if that makes any sense. Back to school temperatures. Can you believe it's already back to school? I know. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's pretty wild. You know, it's Here a good are. day to uh, go to the coast and get some of that mahi you like. Just one, though. Just one. Just one mahi. Both. Not that hungry. Just one mahi. <laughs> Trust the Lord. Thank you. Yep. 617, 76. Well, Barbie is releasing new dolls. We tell you all about them. Still ahead. And you ready to save some money? It's August. Got to head back to school. Next on GMSA, we're going to tell you about some of the best deals that you can save a lot on. Which ones you should actually avoid? 
Well, from summer clothes to laptops, August is filled with deals for savvy shoppers. That's right. David Sears breaking it all down, taking a look at what you should buy this month and what you shouldn't. August is your chance to save a little money on home furnishings. Patio furniture is usually marked down in August. Kohl's is expected to offer discounts of up to 70%. And check out Wayfair, Target, and other retailers. Garden tools are another category where you'll find savings as stores look to clear out inventory. Lowe's, Home Depot, and Amazon are all expected to have items like hedge trimmers and lawnmowers on sale. And watch for deals on laptops tied to back-to-school specials. Deal News predicts savings of up to 65% on some models. And August signals the beginning to the end of summer. And that means savings on warm weather clothing. J. Crew, Banana Republic, and Land's End are just a few of the retailers expected to offer significant savings. As for what not to buy in August, TVs. Black Friday still offers the best deals on electronics. And hold off on an iPhone for a little while longer. Apple usually announces its new models in September, and prices on older iPhones tend to drop then. David Sears, KZ12 News. Are you uh, using this time to shop savvily? I'm just not a sh big shopper. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, me yeah. neither. I also I made don't up get the out word. much. <laughs> yeah, I think I made up the word savvily, so there's that you too. You did. All right, 622, 76 degrees out. Well, Mattel is honoring frontline medical workers with the new Barbie doll. We have the details next. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. Mattel unveiling six new Barbie dolls honoring frontline workers who are leading the fight against COVID. This is a sweet story. The Barbie dolls are part of Mattel's Thank You Heroes program. These one-of-a-kind dolls feature the likeness of Amy O'Sullivan, a nurse who treated the first COVID-19 patient in Brooklyn and became ill herself. Dr. Audrey Sue Cruz, an Asian-American physician who helped fight racial bias and discrimination. Professor Sarah Gilbert helped develop the Oxford uh, AstraZeneca vaccine. Dr. Jacqueline Goes Jesus, who led the genome sequencing of Brazil's COVID variant and Dr. Kirby White, who developed a doctor's gown that could be washed and reused. The company says that it's donating $5 for each Barbie doll sold at Target will be donated to the First Responders Aww. Children's Foundation. That's awesome. So not only does it honor those who are helping so much, but it's for a great cause. Yeah, it inspires little girls, too. Absolutely. All right, 626, 76 degrees out. Well, later this morning on GMSA, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, swipe right, swipe left. It's oh. an addictive new trend called doom scrolling. What? During our 8 a.m. hour, how it can send your mental health spiraling. All right, well, it's a story we've been following throughout the morning and through overnight. This is the scene at 35 and Randolph. We know that there was a head-on collision. We know two people dead after that crash. We also know traffic clearly at a standstill right now. We're going to check in with Jonathan Cotto, joining us live from the scene, breaking it all down, hearing from police. Major traffic accident I-35 in Randolph. Our Jonathan Cotto is at the scene. Apparently it was a head-on collision. Two people are dead. He'll have the full story in just a bit. All right, until then, good morning. It is 6.30 this Saturday, August 7th. Thank you so much for starting your morning, your Saturday, and your weekend with us. We got a lot to talk about. We're going to start off with Justin Horn. The 6'4 man in the corner, Justin, how's it looking out there? No one puts <laughs> Justin in the corner. Why am I in the corner? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Listen, this is the main section of the, the studio right here. Sure. All, right, all right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> uh, right now, we're uh, sitting at 75 degrees at the airport. Some cloud cover out there. It's humid. We know that for sure. And humidity sticks with us most of the day. So we're going to be dealing with a heat index. Southerly winds at about 13 miles per hour. Thankfully, there is going to be a breeze today. Winds will pick up a little bit throughout the afternoon. Here's what we're thinking. We're up around 94 this afternoon. Uh, heat index close to 100. Skies will go sunny, though. Clouds now, they go away pretty quickly, and we're going to be dealing with a lot of sun this afternoon. It's going to be great pool weather. Uh, pollen count, this is yesterday's number, but we do want to point it out. 13,160. The recent rains have kicked mold up pretty high. We'll see where it lands today. Should come down some and uh, should definitely come down next week with less rain in the forecast. We're off to a warm start. 78, Holota 75, Rio Medina 73, Bernie Stage 73, and Seguin 74 right now in Uvalde. And again, some patchy morning cloud cover out there. It just won't last very long. By noontime, I'm thinking mostly sunny. 92 by 3 o'clock, 94, 5 o'clock. And if you have evening plans, we've got, uh, we got clear skies. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Couple things cooking out in the Atlantic. 
Looks like uh, the hurricane season trying to kick up a little bit more. We'll talk more about that here in just a few minutes. Guys? All right, thank you, Justin. Out of the latest on that overnight crash that has 35 at a standstill right now, we're being told two people are dead and one more is in the hospital. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Jonathan, what have you been able to learn about this accident? Well, sir, I'm located on I-35, but what we know so far is that this all started when a driver of a dually truck was traveling northbound on southbound lanes, what started off on I-37. We can take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this morning. Uh, San Antonio police on scene say the driver of the dually pickup truck was seen driving in the wrong lane. They tell us efforts were made to get that driver's attention. They say police on I-37 northbound lanes tried uh, getting that driver's attention as well. SAPD's Eagle helicopter also flying over those lanes attempting uh, to get the driver to react and pull over. All efforts were unsuccessful. That driver jumping onto I-35 in the downtown area. Investigators on scene say the driver was drunk and continue heading north on in the wrong lanes, crashing into an SUV at I-35 in Eisenhower. We've learned two women were inside of that SUV and were killed on impact by the wrong way driver. Now the dually truck bursted in flames upon impact. Officers on northbound lanes jumping across the divide to pull that driver out. Now what we know so far too is the driver was taken to a nearby hospital in critical condition. The officer that assisted that driver out of uh, out of that uh, truck was um, treated for smoke inhalation but it is unclear if he was taken to the hospital. The wrong way driver is facing two counts of intoxication manslaughter. Reporting for GMSA, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. confirming one woman dead after being hit by a train on San Antonio's south side. So take a look. This was the scene just before midnight, the 1400 block of West Hutchins Place. This is the scene. All investigators telling us a woman in her mid-30s hit by the train. She was pronounced dead on the scene. Union Pacific and SAPD still investigating, still working to figure out what exactly happened and trying to determine if it was in fact an accident. Now to the latest on the death of Trinity University cheerleader Kaylee Mandati. Mark Howerton's lawyers now arguing double jeopardy should bar him from retrial. They also say cell phone tower data and GPS information shows a witness was sharing false testimony in the case. The first trial against Mark Howerton ended without a unanimous verdict, but the indictments against him remained in the murder case. Investigators say Mandati and Howerton were dating before the cheerleader was killed. During the 2019 trial, Howerton told investigators that Mandati died following rough consensual sex. Medical experts said she died as a result of blunt force trauma to the head. The retrial was set for this month, but has now been delayed. Well, happening today, we are now just hours away from the second special session at the state capitol in Austin. So it will start around noon, and it's going to start without the 57 Texas House Democrats. Remember, these are the same, same House Democrats who broke quorum to stop a vote on the measure that would add restrictions to voting. Uh, those Texas Democrats are still in D.C. this morning at a White House news conference. Press Secretary Jen Psaki said, quote, the president believes that they have been outspoken advocates and champions of voting rights, end quote. The White House vaccination coordinator meeting with Mayor Ron Nirenberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf to talk about vaccination efforts here in Bear County. Yesterday, that coordinator recognized the work of city leaders and Metro Health to get as many people vaccinated as possible. Nirenberg Wolf and the coordinator talked about how San Antonio stacks up against other major cities in the U.S. I'm truly so proud of the work that San Antonio has done. Um, I got a chance to uh, witness the work that's happening here. We've partnered with the Metro Health team. We've worked with them and got to see the paletas in the park, the local artists putting the, um, the murals, encouraging vaccinations. The, the mayor, county judge, and the vaccine coordinator also had a roundtable discussion to create action plans to keep that vaccination effort going. And speaking of the vaccinations, let's take a look at the rates here in Bear County. According to the latest update from the city of San Antonio, more than 1,300,000 people, 12-year-olds and older, have received at least one dose of the vaccine. The city's dashboard indicates that that is an increase of more than 31,000 people over just the last week. The new data also shows more than 15,000 people have gotten that second dose over the last week. Now, this brings the total of fully vaccinated people in Bear County here at home up to more than a million people. 
Now, if you're looking to get the COVID-19 shot this weekend, there are several vaccine clinics happening across the city. Metro Health and their partners are holding three clinics at Grace Lutheran Church from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., another at Las Palmas Library from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m., and a third one at Pre-K SA North Center from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. They are offering the Johnson and Johnson and Pfizer vaccine. We have all this information listed on KSAT.com. You can also get your vaccine at your local pharmacy as well. And if you are looking for a ride, don't worry, Via's got you covered. You're planning out venturing to get your vaccine, but you don't have a means of transportation. Via Transit is offering free rides to and from vaccination sites across the city of San Antonio. All you need to do is notify the driver that you're going to or returning from a vaccination location. When you board the bus, riders who are registered via trans customers must schedule their trip by phone or online. If you have any questions, we have all this information. You can just head to VIA's website or call the number 210-362-2020. If you have any questions about vaccine clinics, COVID-19 numbers, and back-to-school COVID-19 protocols, we have all that information right now online. Just visit ksat.com and click the coronavirus tab. And parents, do you have COVID-19 or vaccine questions about your kids heading back to middle school or high school for the upcoming 2021-22 year? To help answer any questions you may have about your children going back to the classroom, KSAT will be live streaming a back to school town hall next Wednesday at 7 a.m. with a group of panelists. If you have any questions you want to be, have answered, you can submit them right now to KSAT.com under our KSAT community app. Well, we all know that houses, real estate and building supplies all getting more expensive. So the rising cost of all of this, they're now becoming barriers for the city of San Antonio and local area nonprofits who are focused on creating more affordable housing here at home. The director of the city's neighborhood and housing services says their budget didn't reach as far as they would have liked. And they fear it's only going to get worse and worse. The program's set to build and rehab affordable homes and those that help the down payments for first time homeowners. They just didn't stretch far enough. Home prices are skyrocketing this year and the cost of building materials. Well, there was double in some cases. Habitat for Humanity San Antonio. It's a local nonprofit and they say that they're seeing about a $10,000 increase per home. They build about 50 homes every year. Shipping is four to five times now um, out of Asia as much as it used to be. Uh, the cost of trucking is twice uh, what it usually costs. So that all adds to the extreme cost of building materials. In a city like San Antonio, where we know we have a great need for affordable housing, all of this in the market impacts how many families we can serve and how many more units of affordable housing we can build or we can preserve. And Habitat for Humanity San Antonio says the need is even greater. More than 3,400 people filed applications for new homes just last year. So hopefully this gets cheaper and gets easier so that they can help more people. Mm -hmm. All right, time now, 640, 76 degrees now. Well, tax-free weekend is underway and stores already have seen an increase in shoppers. We'll have this story next. And our Justin Horn is in. He might tell us that the rain is gone for the long haul. We're going to check in with a what you can expect for the rest of the weekend and the start of a lot of people's first week back at school. Well, it's a holiday weekend for back to school shoppers. Tax free weekend is underway, meaning Texans pay no sales tax on most clothing, shoes and school supplies. As Lisa Barrera reports, stores have already seen an increase in shoppers filling up their carts, making sure kids are ready for school. Shoppers lined up early this morning, determined to save a few bucks. When we heard it was tax free, we was like, this is time to get shoes. Her grandson Parker is entering the third grade in style while she keeps some extra change in her pocket. Right now, shoes. He needs school shoes. So we're hoping to save some money on that. <laughs> We'd like to not spend over 50 on shoes. From today until Sunday, August 8th, parents and students can purchase certain school supplies like clothes, shoes and backpacks free of state sales tax. So between these items, clothing, backpack, and even a lunchbox, my total is $172. So exactly how much am I saving? Well, let's do the math. $172 times 8.25% 
I'm saving $14.19. It may not seem like much savings at first, but shoppers say every penny counts. He bought tennis shoes. Yeah, because so. these were originally 69 I got them for 52 38 or 39 So I saved other than tax on this on a pair of shorts and a t-shirt for him. According to the National Retail Federation, Families with children in grades kinder through 12th will spend an average of $849 this year. That's $59 more than last year and a record. To save, experts advise to make a list and a budget, look for sales and compare prices, but also ask about student discounts. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, we know a lot of families out and about at the stores yesterday. Justin Horn, did you make an appearance? Uh, not yesterday. No, <laughs> we've done it. Over the summer, like you know, kind of stretched it okay. out gradually. Yeah, it's a very Justin Horn move right there. Smart. Smart. <laughs> uh, although the sales are well, I guess they aren't sales now. But once they're sales, I'm really on it. Mm. <laughs> Save a little money. Uh, anyway, uh, last night, very cool. Speaking of education, it's always fun to look up to the sky and see the International Space Station. Oh. And this is a great shot of it. It's always hard to capture it, but uh, we, Texas, USA did. That was out in shirts. Very cool. Uh, it was around 8.50 something last night. So, Justin, I mean, you got to point it out to me. It's a white little dot. Oh, I'm right? sorry, yeah. It's the, it's I believe that's thing. it right Yes, okay. okay. Just making sure. Sarah and I are like zooming in on pointing, but yeah, it's not hard. helping. <laughs> I know, people are walking up to the TV like, wait, where is it? Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, that is it. Thank you uh, for sending in that picture. We love to see it. Uh, let's look at the drought monitor. It has been particularly bad across the western half of the country. They're still in a whole world of trouble out here with uh, lots of ex exceptional drought, extreme and exceptional. Uh, water levels are low, still issues. There has been some monsoonal rain there, so it's helped a little bit, but not enough. Uh, so th that's not great. But here in Texas, we're actually doing pretty well. Only 1% of the state is in drought, and it's right here. Big bend. That's it. And we're just talking about a moderate drought. So in general, looking really good here across South Texas, a couple areas that uh, we would consider dry, but that isn't technically drought. So we are completely out of drought here, and the recent rains obviously have, have really helped. Well, let's look at the satellite picture. We notice we've got some low clouds here, uh, San Antonio up across the hill country, and then up and down I-35. But even to the south, we're starting to detect some fog. So uh, there's gonna be a little bit of that out there too. Nothing here in San Antonio, just some low clouds, but Pleasanton, Beeville, Visibilities are starting to come down some. Two and a half miles in Pleasanton, about three quarters of a mile in Beeville. So heads up there, a little bit of fog. Shouldn't last long at all. And looking at this uh, picture here, there's actually not much cloud cover looking over the airport. It'll be uh, kind of off and on this morning, but full sun this afternoon. Temperatures, 75. Uh, t technically, it is reporting cloud. They are reporting cloudy skies at the airport, but doesn't look like it. Southerly winds, 13. Uh, dew point is at 74. 75 Tarpley, 75 Hondo, 76 in Bulverde, close to 80 Canyon Lake, so a warm start there. 77 Catula and 77 down in Laredo. Forecast heat index is going to be near 100, even though high temperatures will probably be mid-90s. When you factor in that humidity, it's going to be uh, very warm outside today. 102 is what it will feel like in Gonzales this afternoon. And the forecast, uh, again, sunny skies for most of us. This does want to produce a few showers off to the uh, east this afternoon. I don't think there will be much there, though. The radar should be fairly quiet. So forecasts, again, calls for a high near 94. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And the extended forecast, 95 Sunday, 96 Monday, 96 Tuesday. And a couple of showers, potentially, Thursday and Friday. And just a quick update. I forgot to throw this graphic in there. Three systems out in the Atlantic that we're watching uh, for some tropical development so far, uh, the chances are pretty low and we have plenty of time to watch, but things starting to heat back up in the Atlantic. Nothing though that indicates it would move towards Texas or even really towards the United States. So that's good news. Guys. Oh, good to know. Thank yep. you, Justin. Justin Horn, thank you so much. 649, 76 degrees out. Well, millions of dehumidifiers are under recall after reports causing some costly fires. We'll explain next. And a live look out of Trans Guide. Still at standstill on 35 this morning. We're going to check in with Jonathan Cotto one more time. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. A safety alert to tell you about right now. Two million dehumidifiers being recalled this morning after reports that some are causing fires. Now, this covers a lot of major brands sold for years. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with more on the hazard, plus why some popular soups may you may you have you may have in your fridge are also being recalled. Dehumidifier danger. Two million dehumidifiers made by Wide Tech are recalled because of a fire danger. The company has 107 reports of the units overheating or catching fire, resulting in $17 million in damage. These were sold between 2009 and 2017 under several major brand names, including Amana, Danby, Friedrich, Heyer, Honeywell, and Whirlpool. The list of sizes and other models is quite long, so we've put them all on our website. Website. If you have one of these recalled dehumidifiers, stop using it and contact Wide Tech to get your money back. If you buy ready to eat Panera Bread soups, listen up. Blount Fine Foods of Texas is recalling more than three tons of Panera's at home chicken tortilla soup. Several customers have reported finding bits of plastic glove in their soup. The use by date on the label is September 9th. Take it back or toss it out. And more than $150,000 store chairs are recalled after reports of finger amputations. These are true living sling chairs sold at Dollar General. They can collapse unexpectedly, catching fingers in the metal joints. Stop using them and contact Dollar General for a refund. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 654, 76 degrees out. Take us a look at some birthdays. All right. Here is Riley. She is 14 years old. Happy birthday, Miss Riley. And next up, we have Lily, 10 years old. Happy birthday, Lily. Remember to keep posting your birthday pictures. KSAT.com slash birthdays. Remember to include name and an age. We'll be right back. Two people dead and one in the hospital this morning. Police investigating a crash causing quite the stir up on I-35 North and southbound lanes. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. What we know so far is that a driver of a dually truck was driving northbound on a southbound lane on I-35 just south of downtown. San Antonio police on scene say the driver of the dually pickup truck was seen driving in the wrong lane. They tell us efforts were made to get that driver's attention. They say police on I-37 northbound lanes tried getting that driver's attention. SAP PD's Eagle helicopter also flying over those lanes, attempting to get the driver to react and pull over. All efforts were unsuccessful. That driver jumping onto I-35 in the downtown area. Investigators on scene say the driver was drunk and continued heading north on the wrong lanes, crashing into an SUV at I-35 and Eisenhower. We've learned two women were inside of that SUV and were killed on impact by the wrong way driver. The dually truck bursted in flames upon impact. Officers on northbound lanes jumping across the divide to pull that driver out. That driver was taken to a nearby hospital in critical condition. The officer who pulled the driver out was treated for smoke inhalation, but unclear if he was taken to a hospital as well. The driver is facing two charges of intoxication manslaughter. Reporting for GMSA, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. We do have some morning clouds out there. Those will burn off pretty quickly and we'll be dealing with sunny skies this afternoon. 94, it'll feel more like 100 though. And from there, temperatures heat up a little bit and really stay pretty consistent. Uh, could be a few coastal showers next week, but uh, generally speaking, this is a hot, dry forecast. Back to school on Monday, it will be hot. Shorts weather all week for the kiddos and probably all the way through like, you know, November before we're talking about long sleeves. All right. Uh, for some cooler weather. Guys. Justin Horn, thank you so much. We are going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America, but a quick update to Jonathan's story as he's been talking about throughout the morning. We do expect the I-35 closure to open up in just a few minutes, so hopefully that is clear by the start of the 8 a.m. Hopefully it's been a mess out there this mm -hmm. morning. Jonathan will also be going to a farmer's market hosted by the San Antonio Food Bank. Mm -hmm. He'll be giving us a little preview of that. Also coming up in our next two hours. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be debriefing and talking about a, a story I did this week about uh, more families going the homeschool route. Oh, okay. And I talked to one family who decided to make that decision. Lots of different elements. People are a lot of different questions about how to go the homeschool route. So we'll have those answers for you. All right. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. I'm going to say see you at 8. See you at 8. There you go. Look <laughs> at that. Go. Look at the smile and the point. <laughs> Live from KSAT 12, 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy weekend. Taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Ooh, not a lot to look at that mm -hmm. right now. What is the rest of the weekend? What does your work week look like? And for a lot of kids, the first day back in the classroom. We're going to check in with Justin Horton in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It's 8 o'clock this Saturday, August 7th. I can't believe kids are already headed back to school this I week. I know, and before that, you know, it's tax-free weekend. Mm -hmm. I actually braved the mall last Ooh. night. Ooh. You know, I, I will say this. I, I, I usually avoid the crowds, mm -hmm. and there wasn't really a lot of people. I didn't go into the mall mall at, mm -hmm. at uh, North Star. I went to like uh, J.C. Penney. And it Would y'all get pants, okay. pants, shirts, you know, <laughs> basic stuff. But it, it it wasn't that crowded. <laughs> And I was, I was like, okay, I can do this. You can do this. All right, what I about you, Justin this. Horn? Are you uh, back to school shopping yet? No. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm kind of like you. I don't want to brave the crowds. And uh, Have your girls started yet? No, not yet. Yeah, I think they have like another week. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, you got time. You got time. Uh, yeah, maybe. We, we've <laughs> done some of the shopping already, though, thankfully. So we're, we're getting it in. We kind of paced ourselves a little bit. Uh, but this weekend is a great weekend to get out and enjoy Whatever you want to do before school starts, because temperatures are going to get pretty toasty this afternoon. We're going to see lots of sun. Temperatures at this hour in the mid 70s, 75 at the airport, 78 Holotus, 75 Divine, 74 in Uvalde. And the visibility, yeah, we have had some problems with fog uh, down in a few spots. Not here in town, but as you go towards uh, Eagle Pass down about two and a half miles in Beeville, close to zero. So that is one area that is seen. Quite a bit of fog. I don't expect that this is going to last very long. Cloud cover wise, we've seen some morning clouds off and on. We are seeing some of that in San Antonio. See, cloudy right now. It's just not going to last that long either. We'll see full sun, I think, actually this afternoon, making it up to 94. It'll feel like it's close to 100. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, so a hot day, more hot weather on the way, and the tropics are heating up. We'll have more on that here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. New this morning, a fire crash on I-35 ends with two people dead on the scene and one more in the hospital, and it caused a massive backup for hours as crews work to clear out the damage. Jonathan Cotto has the latest. It's an incident police say could have certainly been avoided. A suspected drunk driver spotted early on traveling for miles in the wrong direction. San Antonio police on scene say the driver of the Dooley pickup truck was seen driving in the wrong lane. They say police on I-37 northbound lanes tried getting the driver's attention. SAPD's Eagle helicopter also flying over those lanes, attempting to get the driver to react and pull over. All efforts were unsuccessful. That driver jumping onto I-35 in the downtown area. Investigators on scene say the driver was drunk and continue heading north on the wrong lanes, crashing into an SUV at I-35 into Eisenhower. The dually truck bursted in flames upon impact. Officers on northbound lanes jumping across the divide to pull the driver out. They say two women were inside of that SUV and were killed on impact by the wrong way driver. We attempt uh, by traveling on the right side of traffic, our DWI officers uh, attempt to make contact with them by using multiple resources on their uh, patrol unit. They use their floodlight. At one point, they actually did make eye contact with the driver, um, getting his attention without success of having him stop his vehicle. The driver causing the fatal crash was taken to a nearby hospital in critical condition. Police tell us he could be facing two charges of intoxication, manslaughter. As for the two victims, they have not yet been identified. We'll be staying on top of this case. An update to as more information is made available. Reporting, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Take a look out at 35 and Randolph. Police saying due to that major crash, I-35 southbound from Walsham to Eisenhower Road is going to be closed until noon today. So if you are out and about, try to fall, find an alternate route. In San Antonio police are investigating two overnight shootings. The first one happening on the southeast side of town. This was a scene just after midnight on Lake Tahoe Street. That's not too far from Loop 410 and South Foster Road. Police tell us they don't have much to go on, but they do know the suspect was driving down the street and firing shots. That's when police say the, a man was shot twice. He was taken to the hospital. At least 18 shell casings were found on the street. A couple hours later, a bar fight ended in a shooting. It happened at Bentley's Bar on Broadway. Police tell us it all started during a fight inside the bar. Things moved to the parking lot, and that's when a man was shot twice. Someone found the victim in the parking lot and took him to the hospital. The suspects took off.
I need to inform you that under Texas law, the judgment of conviction and the sentence of death is mandated by the verdict of the jury, which is subject to automatic appeal. And the verdict is in. It is now official. Otis McCain sentenced to the death penalty for shooting and killing SAPD Detective Benjamin Marconi. The jurors deliberated for about seven and a half hours yesterday before determining the final punishment. The punishment phase lasted seven days. The prosecution presented 15 witnesses. The defense called on six. This is the first death penalty issued in Bear County in five years. No date set yet for the execution for McCain, but important to mention, McCain will be allowed to appeal his sentence. Now, this is a story we've clearly been following very closely since the start of the trial. You can find a complete recap as well as statements from the Marconi family right now on our website all on ksat.com. Just look for the story on the homepage. Now to the latest on the pandemic. Here at home, we are still in the severe risk level and it appears to be worsening. We continue to see a rise in COVID-19 cases in Bear County. Metro Health says our seven day average is about 1300 new COVID-19 cases. This is a 4% increase from Thursday. Hospitalizations are also rising with 1000 COVID-19 patients in our local hospital. 273 COVID-19 patients are in ICU and 158 are in ventilators. As for vaccination rate, 63.9% of the county is fully vaccinated. And across the country, the U.S. is now averaging 100,000 new COVID-19 cases a day, crossing a milestone last reached during the winter surge. This is yet another reminder of how quickly the Delta variant has spread through the country. The virus is spreading quickly through unvaccinated populations, especially in the south where hospitals have been overrun with patients. Health officials are fearful that the cases will continue to soar. So as an incentive to get the vaccine, Bear County employees could get a rebate of up to $1,000 for getting the shot. Now, Bear County commissioners set to take up the measure during their next meeting set for August 10th. This proposed measure would give employees enrolled in a Bear County self-insured medical plan with Aetna a rebate of up to $1,000 for proof of vaccination by December 15th. Employees enrolled in medical insurance outside of Bear County could receive a rebate of up to $500. Now, commissioners are expected to discuss and take action on the measure this coming Tuesday. Well, topping your morning headlines, encouraging signs that America is getting back to work. Employers added 943,000 more jobs in July. The unemployment rate falling to 5.4%. President Joe Biden calling that indisputable proof that his recovering plan is working, but cautioning the Delta variant still poses a risk. As we continue to battle the Delta surge of COVID, what is indisputable now is this, the Biden plan is working. There's just no question these are great numbers and we should celebrate them, but we're not popping champagne corks until the virus is behind us. The course of the virus still determines the course of the economy. One of the biggest wild cards right now, how consumers and businesses respond to the Delta variant. Just this week, we've seen major companies like Amazon, Microsoft, and Wells Fargo push back their return to office dates. And remember, there can be a ripple effect on local businesses to make up on these decisions. Less foot traffic means less demand at the local coffee shops, restaurants, and gyms. All right, speaking of the Biden administration, they are now extending the pause on student loan repayments. President Joe Biden announcing the big move yesterday. In a statement, the president says there is much work to do on this economic recovery from the pandemic. And for that reason, student loan payments are on hold through at least January 31st of 2022. The pandemic relief benefit was set to expire on September 30th after that unprecedented 19 month suspension. This pause on payments and the interest waiver only applies to federally held loans. Well, going for gold, Pop, Keldon Johnson, and Team USA, they get their gold medal. Go Spurs, go, go Team USA. So the real star of the show this morning, I guess we'll say this morning or last night, Brooklyn Nets star Kevin Durant scoring 29 points, leading all scorers in Tokyo, leading the United States to that 87-82 win over France in the gold medal game. In doing so, Kevin Durant not only avenged the first non-exhibition loss while wearing the red, white, and blue, but also claimed the title of the greatest U.S. men's basketball player in Olympics history. Go Team USA. Go Team USA. Big win. I know a lot of people were skeptical at the beginning. No, we were a little scared. <laughs> there was a lot of shade being thrown at Pop and his coaching style, but... Oh, got it done. Yeah, coming home with the gold. Way to go, Pop. There you go. Just about 810, 77 degrees out.
Well, move over keto. <laughs> After the break, the new diet trend is making a splash in 2021, and it's all about the environment. Ah. All right, let's take a quick live look out at the Alamo City. 77 degrees now. Is today going to be a good beach day, a good pool day? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. If you're looking for a new interesting diet, we have just the one for you, and it is shaking up the food industry. Oh, so many diets to keep track of. Okay, this one's called a climatarian diet, mm. so basically eating foods based on their carbon footprint. Okay. So some restaurants have added climatarian options to their menus. Panera Bread and Chipotle have added labels to allow customers to see the carbon footprint of the menu items. Huh. I'm also the person that doesn't look at the uh, nutritional facts. Uh, I feel like it ruins the meal. No, like, I mean, you gotta, you gotta know. You, uh, you gotta do it. Uh, all right, so what can you do first? Oh my goodness, this is gonna upset a lot of people and me, frankly. Apparently you're supposed to cut out the beef. So get this, to make just one quarter pounder, you need 150 gallons of water. You also have to avoid almonds, pistachios, and avocados since they all require a lot of water to grow. You have to stick to fruits and vegetables that are in season and buy locally. I can, I can dig the buy locally part. I can too. So a climatarian diet is not only good for the environment, but it's also good for mm. your health, Max. All right, cutting out red meat like beef can lower your risk for so many different types of so, situations. So I was talking to our executive producer, Joy, mm -hmm. about this, because I was like- Who was in today, thank you, Joy. I was like, what is this diet? I've been trying to do a plant-based diet, right. trying. Right. And it's hard mm -hmm. because you have to do like, plant-based, but also not eat a lot of fat. Mm -hmm. And this kind of, the climatarian diet is very similar because a lot of the fatty foods need a lot of water. Mm. What about you, Justin Horn? Are you uh, interested in the climatarian diet? <laughs> I'm not answering that question because I don't want to get emails. I know how this works. <laughs> I'm staying right down the middle. Sounds great. You know, whatever you want to eat. <laughs> well done. All right, Justin, what about the weather? Yeah, we stay neutral in the weather department. Okay. Uh, let's look at the averages for the month of August. This is our hottest time of the year, 97. Uh, this is where we usually top out. This is when we would see uh, a lot of times triple digits. We haven't seen that so far this year, but we are looking at some hotter temperatures ahead. This is an interesting number. We've had 34 consecutive days at San Antonio International of below average temperatures. We spent most of July minus one day at or below, and we've started off August below average. Now, as we head into the weekend, temperatures are going to be close to the average, and then we may we may get a little bit above that as we get into next week. We'll see. But uh, it's been a pretty good summer to us so far. It is looking more like summer on the weather map today across the state. Most places will be in the mid to even upper 90s. Heat index values will be up above 100. We'll be close to that number. 98 is what it will feel like this afternoon here in San Antonio, but places like Houston, Corpus, uh, Tyler, Waco, Dallas, those heat index values will be above the century mark, hot and humid. Looking at the setup, we have uh, high pressure just kind of anchored off to our west, and it's not over top of us, but it'll be near, near enough to where it will exert some influence on our forecast and really keeps things pretty quiet going into next week. That last system that brought us rain is moving away. And on water vapor, this also tells the story here because we've got uh, this, this red and orange color here represents dry air in the mid levels of the atmosphere. Basically, all you need to know from this is that rain is pretty much out of the picture now. And the satellite uh, shows we did have some clouds. Those are trying to break up. And I think these will go away pretty quickly. Full sun this afternoon, which will push those temperatures up. Starting to see some blue sky out there as we look out over the airport. 75 right now, 79 Stenson, 77 Kelly, and 77 over at Randolph. There was a little bit of fog in some spots too, generally south of San Antonio. Beeville still looking at visibility close to zero. Eagle Pass, the other place with a little bit of fog too, 2.5 as far as visibility is concerned there. Temperature wise, 70s for most of us. These numbers will be in the 80s here soon now that the sun is up and will race upwards into the 90s. Now, this is the forecast heat index, not the air temperature, but what it will feel like this afternoon. We mentioned 98 here in San Antonio, but places like New Braunfels, Pleasanton, Gonzales, Bevo, Catula, that's where you're going to see those heat indices jump up above 100. So the forecast calls for 92 by 3 o'clock, 94 by 5 o'clock, 89 by 8 o'clock. Let's start to, to look at the tropics now because things are beginning to heat up there. Uh, not much over the Caribbean, but as you get out into the Atlantic, 
right there. That's a pretty good looking wave. We've got a couple more that are starting to show some signs of development. This one that is uh, far out there. This one shows the greatest promise, about 40% chance of development over the next five days, according to the Hurricane Center. This one about a 30% chance and this uh, weaker one just a 10% chance. But it shows us that uh, things are going to become more active as we move forward. We kind of had a little bit of a break. If we do get a name storm within the next couple of weeks, it would be Fred followed by Grace and Henri. Uh, forecasts uh, looking ahead, 95 Sunday, 96 Monday as we head back to school, just a few coastal showers potentially by the middle part of next week. Otherwise, temperatures are very consistent, guys. All right, Justin Horn, thank you so much. 818, 77 degrees out. Well, school is about to start for lots of kids here in the Alamo City, and they are going to be spending a lot of time on their laptops and iPads. After the break, what every parent needs to know about protecting their children's eyes. Welcome back. Laptops and tablets have become important tools for your children since the beginning of the pandemic. That's right. In fact, they probably use them almost every day, whether it's for school, work, games, even just keeping in touch with family and friends. But all that extra screen time could be damaging their eyes. So what are you supposed to do about it? David Sears explains. In a normal school year, the classroom is 100% in person, but with online schooling during a global health pandemic comes hours and hours of screen time for your kids. Now, pediatric eye specialists are seeing the effects of all that time looking at the computer screen over the past year and a half. Researchers from Tufts University say they've seen more and more reports of younger patients complaining of dry eyes, eye strain, and headaches. These symptoms could be caused by a number of factors, including poor lighting and too much glare. Taking breaks from prolonged screen time is a great way for your kids to combat vision fatigue. Experts say a 10-minute break for every hour of online work can significantly reduce eye irritation. You can also dim the lights in the room to get rid of any glares on the screen. That way, your child isn't squinting or straining their eyes. Perhaps the most effective way to protect your kid's eyes, a yearly eye exam. If your child often complains about blurry vision or headaches, it may not be because of extended screen time, and you should speak with a pediatric eye doctor. David Sears, KZ12 News. Now, there's no shame in glasses. There's no shame. Look at that. I actually thought about getting uh, blue light glasses. You know, uh, Stephen Cavazos, mm -hmm. he wears those. He wore them on air the other day. He says they're, they're helping him. He looks so good in them. I'm afraid to wear glasses on air. I look like Do it. five years there old. You go. Hey oh, guys. look at you. Show you know, it off. I, it, um, work the runway. <laughs> work it. Work it. All right, let's do Time now. 823, 77 degrees out. Well, after the break, a look at what's coming up this morning on Texas Eats. restaurant in San Antonio. When you think of Chinese food, when you think of Sichuan, like the, like the real stuff, that's where you want to go. That's where you recommend people to go to. So I have to know right here, right off the top, this is a lobster dish unlike anything I've ever seen before. I love what's going on here. Talk to me about how this is prepared. This is a fresh live lobster that we have for you. It's going to be lightly battered in potato starch um, and it's deep fried and sauteed with the spices and herbs from the Setsuan region. And just off the top, it looks a little spicy, but I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> All right, this is the lobster. Here's the bite. Give me some love. Give me some love. That's delicious. It's amazing. Wow. The lobster dish out here at Dashi starts with a live lobster. It's poached lightly, and then they add that texture on the outside. So you're getting a lot of nice crunch, plus you're getting that tender lobster on the inside. Then there's lots of seasoning on there as well. A little bit of spice, but a whole lot of flavor. Lobsters live, they make a hissing noise. Mm. It's kind of sad. I'm it's not, terrifying. <laughs> I'm not a lobster person, but we're running out of time. 828, 77 degrees out. Well, just ahead in our next half hour, we're live at the farmer's market for the San Antonio Food Bank. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend, 831 this Saturday morning, August 7th. Thank you so much for starting your morning, your weekend with us. How's the last couple of days been? I know that's your weekend. Yeah, it's been good. We I enjoyed I enjoyed the four inches of rain and my mm -hmm. rain gauge on Thursday. Um, you know, good good resting, sleepy, thunder, yeah. thunder weather. At Thursday morning we had thunder. Oh, I was I slept through that, Justin Horn. Are we expecting more thunder? Mm-hmm. I was working actually. No, I'm oh. just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> no. Rubbing it. Aren't you uh, jealous that you couldn't eat sometimes those mornings though when it's like Oh man, thunders? it was perfect. Yeah. It was perfect. Yeah, it was a lightning, thunder, good rain. It was really good sleeping in weather Thursday. That's all starting to come to an end. We're moving into more of a dry, hot pattern where it's it's just going to be uh, warm and humid each and every day. We are starting off with a little bit of fog this morning. I'll caution you there. Not here in San Antonio, but you go south and we are running into some of that lower visibility. Beeville over to Eagle Pass, although just within the last half hour, Eagle Pass starting to see that visibility come up. So this fog's not going to last much longer, and we'll be looking at uh, sunny skies actually this afternoon. Satellite picture does show that we've had a few morning clouds here and there uh, trying to pop up, but the sun's also already starting to shine through. And if you're heading to the beach this weekend, still a lot of people heading down there. It's uh, it's really pretty nice, uh, low 90s. Uh, water temperatures at 86, can't beat that. Uh, really no chance of rain, wave high two to four feet. Uh, looking at forecast here in San Antonio, 92 by three o'clock, 94 by five o'clock. It'll feel more like 100 with a good breeze though. Southerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. More of this ahead in the extended forecast. We'll take a look at the seven day forecast here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. Now to a story we've been following very closely, a deadly and terrifying crash on I-35. that actually shut down part of the highway this morning. Take a look. Investigators tell us around 2.30 this morning, police spotted a wrong way driver headed northbound on the southbound lanes at 37 just south of downtown. The police helicopter called out, also trying to get the driver's attention. Eventually, that wrong way driver getting on to 35 in the downtown area, heading north on the southbound lanes. The driver kept going, eventually crashing into an SUV at I-35 in Eisenhower. Two women were inside that SUV that was hit. Both women died on impact. Now, the wrong way driver driving a truck, it burst into flames on impact. Officers on the northbound lanes, they stopped. They jumped over the wall divider. They re rescued the driver from the fire, saving the suspect's life. He was taken to a nearby hospital at last check in critical condition. Now, one responding police officer was treated for smoke inhalation. That wrong way driver now facing two counts of intoxication manslaughter. Uvalde police are revealing new details about a smuggling operation in that area. They shared the news on their police Facebook page yesterday. Investigators say they tried to stop the driver of a black truck suspected of human smuggling. As that driver came to a stop, 15 people got out and ran off. 12 people were caught by officers in that area. A gun was found under the driver's seat. The driver was arrested and facing several charges. Now to the latest in the pandemic, BAMC says they are now taking on additional trauma patients, helping ease the local health care system, taking in patients with COVID. According to a press release, BAMC, quote, receiving all interfacility transfers of injury patients who require a higher level of care from across the trauma region, end quote. Now this marks the third time BAMC has taken on high to higher percentages of trauma patients since the start of this pandemic. Governor Greg Abbott has been unwavering when it comes to new mask mandates. Abbott, who has publicly advocated for vaccinations and got his shot on TV, encouraging vaccinations and calling it the surest way to end the pandemic. But then he made one thing clear, saying going forward in Texas, there will be no government imposed shutdowns or mask mandates. Everyone already knows what to do. End quote. Abbott recently declared Texas is past the time of government mandates. U.S. Senators are convening for a rare weekend session on the bipartisan infrastructure bill. And if all goes President Biden's way, this weekend could wrap up swiftly with the passage of that $1 trillion infrastructure package. Or it could drag out for days. So if it passed, the infrastructure package would inject $550 billion of new spending over the next five years on roads, bridges, waterways, broadband, and other projects to virtually every corner of our country. If approved by the Senate, it would then go to the House. But... The Congressional Budget Office reports the bipartisan infrastructure plan making its way through Senate would add $256 billion to our projected deficits. Well, the immense battle for firefighters in the West this morning as they fight more than 100 wildfires, including the third largest in California history. Flames destroying homes, businesses and historic buildings. California's Dixie Fire, now the third largest in the state's history, greater than the size of Houston destroying over 100 homes, eviscerating the Gold Rush town of Greenville. Multiple people still reported missing two days later. Further south, the river fire exploding to nearly 3,000 acres. Three people, including a firefighter, are injured. One resident shooting this before fleeing his home. 
Well, it's completely gone. And all our neighbors, great neighbors, they're leveled. The mega drought in the West, one of the main factors for the explosive fires like Oroville, a major provider of water in that region, no longer providing resources from their hydroelectric power plant because of a lack of water. And overseas now, the wildfires in Greece are forcing thousands and thousands of evacuations with flames edging closer to Athens. ABC's Enos de Locotera has the latest. More than 50 fires still burning across Greece right now. Take a look at this. We are just 45 minutes from downtown Athens right now. That hillside completely charred. Those flames sending plumes of smoke into the sky, and that helicopter has been trying to put those flames out all morning. This is the scene across Greece right now. Thousands of residents being told to evacuate. In one part, residents were roused from their beds in the middle of the night and told to get to safety. On the island of Evia, that's two hours from Athens, residents there being told to get to the beach so they could be evacuated on boats. That's how bad the situation was there. Flames surrounding the region and residents could only evacuate by boat. We spoke to one resident here in the suburbs of Athens yesterday. She was torn about what to do. She'd been living here for 18 years and she said she was scared, but she just couldn't bring herself to leaving her home behind. But officials urging residents to heed those evacuation orders and get to safety. They're revealing the first casualties linked to these fires and revealing at least a dozen people have been taken to the hospital with serious injuries. When you talk about what's fueling these fires, it's the scorching heat here. So Greece currently in the middle of its worst heat wave in three decades. Temperatures at one point hitting 115 degrees and that combined with the strong winds it's what's making for these fires to break out and spread rapidly. And that's the case not just in Greece, but across the Mediterranean region. We're seeing that in, in Turkey, Italy, Albania, in Turkey, those fires turning deadly and Turkey actually reporting its worst wildfires to date. Guys. All right, Enos de la Catera, thank you so much. 838, 77 degrees out. Well, let's take a look a look outside with Transguide. Uh, see if that, that's I-35 in Randolph. Things oh. looking like they're clearing up earlier. It was a standstill traffic because they had lanes closed. Now, our understanding, some lanes are still closed near the Eisenhower area. We'll keep you updated on that throughout the morning. All right, let's take a wider look out at the Alamo City. 77 degrees out now. Ooh, picture perfect out there. A few clouds in the sky. What is the rest of the day? What does the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments. Good morning. Welcome back and happy weekend. San Antonio Food Bank hosting a farmer's market this morning. The goal, making healthy and fresh produce a part of your daily diet. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live from the food bank's main campus off Enrique Barrera Parkway. Jonathan, what do people need to know about the market? Well, they need to know that they're going to be able to find a bunch of delicious food. A lot of your favorite ingredients, Max, Sarah. I know you guys love your fresh fruit and vegetables, so there's plenty of that here. But why don't we bring over Melanie McGuire, Chief Program Officer for the San Antonio Food Bank. Melanie, what's taking place today and what can the public expect? Yeah, so this is our, one of our farmer's markets. We have these across the city, but we have them here on the first Saturday at the San Antonio Food Bank. And it's really a wonderful time to come out with your family and be able to take part in some fresh food and vegetables. You know, that's something that the food bank really advocates for. We want to make sure kids are healthy and adults are healthy. So we want to get more fruit and vegetables into their diet. And so this most of this produce is actually locally grown from our farm. We have 50 acres of a farm right behind us. And a lot of this produce comes straight from the farm. It's super nutritious nutritious, super fresh, and it goes right to your table. Now, I know uh, you guys, it's been, a busy, it's been a busy week for the San Antonio Food Bank. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the effort, the, the production that went behind uh, to put this all together. Yeah, we've been running farmers markets for years, but especially now during the pandemic when families are looking for fruit and vegetables, um, we want to make sure that's easily accessible to the community. So it's really helpful to have those right here um, where you can pick them up. Um, you can access this product. You can use your EBT benefits or your food stamp benefits to access that. And we also want to make it affordable for families. A lot of the times we hear that people don't eat fruit and vegetables because it's too expensive. So really having that affordable local product um, is something that families tell us that they love and they really enjoy coming here. Well, thank you so much, Melanie, Max, Sarah. Here on the table, we have some corn, fresh tomatoes, onions, uh, cucumbers, sweet potatoes, grapefruit, peppers, you name it, they have it. Coming up at 9.30 on the next half hour, we'll be talking about the Mobile Mercado. Ooh. It's a food truck with actual food, raw food. 
that you can go inside and do a little shopping. So we'll have that for you coming up. Back to y'all. Thank you, Jonathan. I love that a lot of that produce is from their actual farm, right. which I'm sure is actually doing great because of all the rain that yeah. they've gotten out there, Justin. I know I, I have a very small garden and it is flourishing right now, but it's just because- It's a quick humble brag, not a big yeah. deal. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's all mother nature's job because she's, sure. she's been doing a great job this summer. Usually last summer, not so much because we didn't have a lot of rain. It's true. And we haven't had to use the sprinklers that much or our water bill looks a lot better. It's all a good thing. Grass is green. Now we're going to shift into more of a dry pattern, at least over the next week or so. But you know, the way it's been going, we can deal with that for at least a week, I guess. Uh, I want to show you a picture. I showed this uh, at 6 a.m. a little bit earlier, but I think it's really cool. Uh, someone was able to catch the International Space Station flyover last night. Just it, kind of hard to do with camera, but they, uh, they did a great job there. This was out in shirts. We appreciate the picture. It is uh, right there, I believe. That is the ISS. Uh, Thank you for sending that in. Let's talk now about the drought. It is really, really bad out west. You've seen some of the fires out there. Not a good situation. There's not been much rain. We've been very blessed with the rain, but that's not the case. Utah over to Nevada and California, where the, the drought continues to really hold on. There have been some monsoonal rains across parts of Arizona and New Mexico, which have helped. In Texas, there is just one little area, and it's basically the big bend that is technically still in drought. That accounts for 1% of the state. It's in a moderate drought. It's no big deal there. You'll notice there is a little bit of yellow there along the, the border. That is just dry. That's not technically considered drought. So all of our areas out of drought. Uh, we'll see how long that lasts. But you look at the rainfall estimates the last seven days. Uh, everybody has received rain in some form or fashion, which is incredible uh, to see that over the last week or so. It, it, we've had some bouts of, of heavy rain too that have really added up. As we look at the uh, satellite and radar this morning, no rain to speak of, just a little bit of morning cloudiness. It's already starting to break up, so we're, no, we're going to see a lot of sun today, and that will really boost temperatures. Uh, one other thing we're watching here on water vapor is this orange and red color. That represents some pretty dry air, and that typically keeps rain out of the picture. That's going to be around today, too. So if we're going to see any showers on the radar, I think it's probably going to be over towards Houston, not here. Here's the scene outside. Blue skies already in place. 75 degrees. Dew point is at 74. That number and the dew point, the temperature, got close enough this morning to develop a little bit of fog in spots, but that is already lifting. And we've got a southerly breeze at about 9 miles per hour. Up to 80, Castroville, 76 in Rio Medina. 76 Comfort, 75 Bandera, and closing in on 80, Canyon Lake. Uh, 79 Kennedy, 78 in Gonzales. We know it'll be humid today, so yes, the temperatures are not as bad as they could be, but the heat index will jump up close to 100 in places like Pleasanton, Gonzales, New Braunfels, Cotilla, even Carrizo Springs. San Antonio is going to get awful close. Forecast calls for 88 noontime, 92 by 3 o'clock. We're up around 94 for high southerly winds, 10 to 15 miles per hour. And the extended forecast, 95 Sunday, 96 Monday, 96 Tuesday. Uh, basically, you get to decide between 94, 95, or 96. That's your choice. We'll see where we end up. But uh, lots of sun and maybe, just maybe, a stray shower or two as we get uh, closer to the end of next week. But I'm not terribly hopeful, guys. All right, Justin Horn, thank you so much. Time now, 848, 78 degrees out. Well, just ahead, these penguins Aww, giving uh -oh. us all the feels this morning. We have video. It's going to be super cute. You don't want to miss it. Best kind of tuxedo. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Take a live look at your lotto numbers. You in? No, I did not. But go ahead, I'll, I'll explain later. Okay, you showed up to work, so I didn't think you won. <laughs> Pick three, six, two, eight, fireball six, daily four, one, three, five, nine, fireball eight. All right, catch five, two, four, six, 26, 29. Let's take a look at the Mega Million numbers. Okay, nine, 18, 40, 46, 69, Mega Ball nine, Mega Plier two. No one won the 100 oh. and what was it, 79? No, 100 and not, 191 million okay. jackpot last night, so it continues. All right. Well, it is puppy time, and Michelle is here from the Animal Defense League. And oh my goodness gracious, I love how the one ear is sticking up on that I little know. baby. Who it's is kind that? Of like standard setting for her. So this is Triathlon. She is a two-month-old Labrador mix. She's available for adoption at our Nacogdoches campus, and she's so sweet, so calm. Um, would gets along with other dogs. She's amazing. We love her. Yeah, and <laughs> with those paws, I'm sure being a lab mix, she's going to be. 
big puppy. Yeah, so she's going to be medium to large size for sure. Um, we, we can't, you know, 100% estimate how big she's going to be, but she won't be this small forever, unfortunately. <laughs> but still small enough to sit on your lap and, and right on the couch and absolutely, take up all that room. So, absolutely, absolutely. You've got a huge fundraiser coming up here. This sounds really cool. Yes, we do. So we have our British Rock Nights fundraiser coming up. So it is on August 20th. Um, it is going to be a hosted event and a comedy show from John O'Hurley. He was on Seinfeld. Um, and so all the benefits from that event will proceed the Animal Defense League and a couple other local organizations to help us save more lives. All right. Well, fantastic. And if you'd like more information about that or this little hi, yes. oh, you just don't know what to think with those little <laughs> eyes there. Yes. Just uh, head on out to the Animal Defense League, 11300 Nacogdoches, or give them a call at 655-1481. Well, if you're looking Aww. at your TV right now, if you're not, go ahead and look at it because we have a feel good video for you this morning. These are four penguin chicks at the aquarium in Chicago and they are taking their first swim. They were born earlier this year. Aquarium officials say they have not been named yet. Look, I like the little tufts. They still have like the little fuzzies on their top of All their right, head. So no names yet. What are you going to name them? I don't know. I like the little mohawk, their little baby fur. Mo. Mo. Done. Mm, As well. We got one more. We'll think of names too. We will. <laughs> 854, 78 degrees out. Well, how much time do you spend on the internet? Ugh, too much. After the break, why you may want to put your phone down. I'm looking at Max, looking at his phone right now. Mm, one of us has to use <laughs> social media. <laughs> All right, as we read this, Max and I literally just put our phones down. So people are on their phones more now than ever. A lot of those hours have been devoted to doom scrolling. Okay, so doom scrolling, <laughs> an interesting term. Uh, it's nonstop online surfing through negative news and social media. The problem, it could actually be causing serious damage to your mental health. And you're really like letting your emotions get the best of you. It seems like I couldn't look away from it. People who do a lot of doom scrolling often look like a depressed person. You have trouble up. sleeping. You may yeah, lose you your appetite. Your you will have difficulty with relationships. All right. Well, the key to stopping the scroll, mm. find a way to interrupt the cycle with things like exercise or a new hobby, or you could also start a daily gratitude journal. Hmm. Also, try to stay off of social media for at least 72 hours. If that's too difficult, decrease the amount of hours you're online each day. So there you go. Are you done with doom scrolling? No, I'm like, a, I'm addicted, you know? No, yeah. some call it being informed. Yeah. 857, 78 degrees out. Well, ahead in our next half hour, we'll introduce you to one family who decided to go the homeschool route oh. this year for the first time. Two people dead after a terrifying crash on I-35. It actually caused the highway to be shut down for several hours. In just a few moments, we're going to check in on the roadways, see what you need to know before you leave the house. And more than 1,000 people affected by 9-11 are pressuring the Biden administration to release terror attack documents. We have that story. And back here at home, 78 degrees to start your Saturday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the rest of the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Justin Horn in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It is 9 o'clock this Saturday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us, starting your weekend with us. You were just talking about your garden earlier. Are we allowed to call you a master gardener no. and why not? Stop <laughs> calling me that because I am self-taught. Master mm. gardeners have actual degrees, oh. they go through classes. You know, I still kill plants on a regular basis. <laughs> so no, <laughs> please stop calling me a master gardener. You do say the garden is flourishing though. It is flourishing, Justin, because the rain. We've had mm -hmm. so much rain. On Thursday, my rain gauge, four inches. Whoa, uh, yeah, and by the way, your garden looks really nice. I do Thank take you. advice from you. Uh, I was very excited because my Sago finally started sprouting. I told you it was going to come back. I don't know what months. that is. It's a Sago palm. Mine Sago came back palm. too. Yeah, the freeze did a number on it, but it is starting to come back. Uh, all this rain has been helping for sure. We're going to say goodbye to the rain for a little bit. That's the, the way the forecast is looking anyway. This morning, we're off to a warm, humid start. A little bit of cloud cover out there at this hour, but that's starting to sort of break up. Your morning clouds, they should last another couple of hours, and then we'll probably go full sun this afternoon, which will really increased temperatures. If you're heading out to one of the state parks, it's going to be toasty today, but a lot of sun. Uh, partly cloudy out near Devils River State Natural Area, 99 there. But uh, some places in the hill country, up to about 90, it'll feel a little bit warmer than that because the humidity is going to stay with us all day long. We'll have a good southerly breeze, too, to deal with. 
into the afternoon. So here's what the forecast looks like here in San Antonio. 88 noontime, 92 by 3 o'clock, 94 your high temperature. Heat index will be in the upper 90s, and we'll get a southerly breeze, as we just said, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, we've had a pretty good stretch here. We're going to look back at some of the numbers and also look ahead with your seven-day forecast coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. New this morning, two people dead, another in the hospital after a terrifying head-on crash on I-35. So take a look. This was the scene, the crash that shut down part of the highway. Investigators tell us around 2.30 this morning, police spotted a wrong way driver headed northbound on the southbound lanes of 37. Police tell us the man who was driving a truck eventually got onto 35 and then crashed head on into an SUV at 35 in Eisenhower. Two women were in that SUV that was hit. Both died on impact. The truck of the driver responsible burst into flames. Now officers on the scene actually jumped over the divider and it saved the driver from the fire. Now he was taken to a nearby hospital at last check is in critical condition. One responding police officer was treated for smoke inhalation. Now the suspect now facing two counts of intoxication manslaughter. And taking a look out at the roadways right now, we know earlier this morning in our 6 a.m. hour, there was a standstill, but 35 looks like it is going smoothly. We do know that parts of the highway still shut down until noon. I need to inform you that under Texas law, the judgment of conviction and the sentence of death is mandated by the verdict of the jury, which is subject to automatic appeal. Well, it is now official Otis McCain has been sentenced to the death penalty for shooting and killing SAPD detective Benjamin Marconi. Jurors deliberated for about seven and a half hours yesterday before determining that punishment. The punishment phase lasted seven days with the prosecution presenting 15 witnesses and the defense calling on six witnesses. This is the first death penalty issued in Bear County in about five years. No date has been set for his execution. Important to mention, McCain will be allowed to appeal his sentence. In your morning headlines, a New Jersey gym owner and former MMA fighter is the first rioter to plead guilty for assaulting a police officer during the January 6th Capitol riots. Scott Fairlam also pleading guilty to obstructing an official proceeding. According to the deal with prosecutors, he could face a sentence of more than three years in prison. Also agreed to pay $2,000 in restitution for damage done to the Capitol. The Justice Department has charged more than 560 federal defendants in these riots. Well, 1,600 Americans affected by the September 11th terror attack are asking President Joe Biden to release the government's records. The group sent a letter to the president reminding him of a campaign promise to release documents and information about the 9-11 attack. Some have accused the government of keeping people in the dark about Saudi Arabia's role in supporting Osama bin Laden. The group does not want President Biden to attend the 20th anniversary memorial ceremonies at Ground Zero in New York if he does not comply. White House press secretary says the president remains committed to his campaign pledge, but needs the DOJ to take the final steps. Well, here at home, blood supply remains in short supply for San Antonio. It's a big problem the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is facing and has faced throughout this pandemic. There is a blood drive planned today, this morning. It's on the west side. Take a look at your screen. It's near Loop 410 and Calabria Road. It starts at 11 a.m., goes to 4 p.m. Pre-registration is encouraged, and you can do just that visiting SouthTexasBlood.org. We have all this information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. All right, also happening today, this morning, we're talking about nutritious fruits and vegetables. They are fresh and they are locally grown and they're available to you at the San Antonio Food Bank. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live from the Food Bank's Farmer's Market. Jonathan, we understand the San Antonio Food Bank not only hosts the Farmer's Market every first Saturday of the month, but they also reach different areas of the city. That's right, Sarah. Well, I'm actually standing inside a mobile mercado, a.k.a. your pharmacy on wheels. Now, trust me, I've been to a plenty of food trucks in my lifetime, but not one that you can actually step inside and do a little shopping. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to help myself to a beverage here. <laughs> and I have my friend Melody. Melanie, this is wonderful, and it's a good way to access certain areas throughout the city, right? 
Yeah, you know, we put this um, Momo Mercado in strategically areas where there may be a difficulty for families to access a grocery store um, or where there might be a need for more fruit and vegetables in those communities. And so we pull up into, you know, parking lots, health clinics or other locations to make sure that families have access to healthy fruit and vegetables. Um, and also we do a lot of education out of this truck. So we want to make sure that we educate families in terms of what are the right things they should be eating if they're battling uh, diabetes or heart disease and um, also incorporate some recipes as well. Now, I love that you guys call it a pharmacy on wheels. What can residents, what can uh, the community expect? What are your times and how often are you guys out in, in neighborhoods? Yeah, so we actually have a schedule at safoodbank.org and you can actually look at where our mercado is going to be at any given time. We're always on the road. Um, and as I mentioned, we try to be in San Antonio the majority of the time, but we also go into rural communities where, um, you know, they may not have access to the same uh, services that we have here in San Antonio. And so we want to make sure that our entire service area in our community we are able to access this food. Well, thank you so much, Melody, Max, Sarah. I'm gonna to continue to hang out inside this food truck. One, because there is healthy food, but two, there's also air conditioning. It's very hot outside. Uh, we'll toss it back to y'all. Smart man, Jonathan. Stay cool. <laughs> thank you, Jonathan. 908, 78 degrees out. WhatsApp is rolling out a new view once feature. We'll tell you what this means still ahead. Plus, the number of homeschooled children increasing dramatically in the last year because of COVID. Next on GMSA, we're going to introduce you to a local family who is now deciding to go homeschool for the first time. Take a look outside with live cam. 78 degrees at 9.08 this morning. Looks like the sun is out. Justin will let you know what your tax-free weekend oh. forecast is. Welcome back. Well, there are about 750,000 students who are homeschooled in Texas, and that number has increased dramatically in the past year. That's right. Families interested in homeschooling going up 300% in South Texas alone. All this according to the nonprofit Feast. Now, that nonprofit actually guides families through this complicated homeschool process. So I spoke with one family who decided to go the homeschool route for the first time this school year. Because I love home and I love school. Four-year-old Lily simply lays it out why she loves homeschool. She is starting pre-K for the first time, not in a classroom at a school, but in her classroom at home that she shares with her brothers Jacob, who is starting third grade, and James, an eighth grader. It's a bit more fun than normal. Okay. And uh, now you you're to stay with your family. Uh -huh. Mom turned teacher to her three children. Christy Tavera says she and her husband have been thinking about taking their children out of public school and homeschooling them for a while. After spending a year at home virtually and seeing her children enjoyed it, they decided to make the switch. It wasn't just like one thing that was like, oh, that's it, I'm pulling him out. It was kind of just a slow progression over time. She says some of the reasons for making the switch included keeping her children safe during the pandemic and wanting to choose their own curriculum. She says she is also able to give her third grader, Jacob, the attention he needs. With my youngest, he's ADHD. And I really wanted to keep him off of electronics. By law, homeschool families must choose their own curriculum and they make their own schedule. Tavera says she was intimidated about teaching her eighth grader math and science, which is why they chose a computer led curriculum with a STEM focus for him. He's doing an online course. It's not teacher led, it's computer led. So what he knows, they're going to go ahead and skip and go to what he doesn't know so that he's constantly being challenged. Another priority of theirs to incorporate lots of travel. Her husband travels for work, so they bought an RV to tag along with him, but more importantly, to use it to take field trips to teach their children about different parts of our country, history and culture. We're able to see things and, and just experience things that they would not experience if they were sitting in a classroom with 25 other kids. James says traveling with his family is one of his favorite parts that goes along with the homeschool schedule. I think travel's pretty good. You should see something in your life. You got, you got the possibility of 80 years. You might as well use them to the best capability. I love James. He was yeah. a very matter of fact, smart, it's a great quote. smart eighth grader. So homeschool advocates also want people to know that there is a difference between public school at home and homeschool. So public school at home, you're still tied to the public school curriculum. Uh, you're still tied to the public school schedule and you're, you're using 
public school teachers to teach and grade just you know virtually mm -hmm. or from a distance. We're homeschooling the parents. You choose the curriculum, you choose the scheduling, and the parents do the grading and in charge of keeping documents for transcripts and a diploma. Much more individualized. Exactly. All right, very cool. KSAT.com? Yep, all that information is on, is on KSAT.com. Perfect. 915, 78 degrees out. Justin, mm -hmm. what, we, what's that graphic? A cool summer so far. Oh, well, we, put, we put cool in quotes. Cool uh, 78 ish. now, though. <laughs> because, look, uh, it's hot always here in South Texas, but it's been below average for basically a month now, which is pretty impressive. We've put together a good streak here. 34 consecutive days at or below average. Last time we were above average was July 3rd. Uh, we've started off August a little bit below average, but we are trending uh, to uh, hotter temperatures. That's going to be our future, I think, and we'll start to see more of that going forward where we're in the mid-90s, which, by the way, the average high temperature this time of year is 97. So uh, we'll be close to that. Uh, I think August will probably see more average-like weather, but we've had a good stretch, as I mentioned, and a lot of that's due in large part to the rainfall that we've received. Uh, across the state, temperatures are also starting to warm up. We're looking at 90s in a lot of spots today. Dallas will be up near 95. Heat index up around 101. Midland, San Angelo, Laredo, Brownsville, you name it. Everyone's going to be pretty toasty today, including here in San Antonio, where that heat index will likely get up close to 100 here as well. We're forecasting 98 for that feels like number. Current setup, high pressure is sitting off to our west, sort of. And I say that because it's not one of those big heat highs. It's not going to spread and cause our temperatures to really go up. But it is in control in one way or another, and just sort of weakly. And, and that's going to keep uh, rain pretty much out of the picture going forward. Y you look at the uh, satellite radar, just a few showers up there across parts of North Texas. Otherwise, it's a pretty quiet scenario. And we've also got some drier air in the mid levels of the atmosphere. We can see that on water vapor. So that would also tell me that rain's not a good bet today. If we're going to see any shower activity in the state of Texas, it's probably going to be over towards Houston, where there's still a little bit of upper level energy there. Outside right now, partly cloudy skies, 75 at the airport, 81 Stinson, 80 Kelly, and 79 Randolph. You heard Jonathan stay earlier. It's warm out there. And that's because the humidity is just so high. Uh, dew points are in the 70s in a lot of spots. And temperatures, 81 Castroville, 78 Hondo, 75 Bernie Stage, 75 in Uvalde, and 80 in Del Rio, where there is a good morning cloud deck underway. Forecast heat index today locally, 99 Carrizo Springs. It'll feel like 102 in Del Rio. A lot of triple digits, I think, east of I-35 with those dew points as high as they are. 94 are expected high here in San Antonio. We will get a good southerly breeze today, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Let's check in on the tropics. Three areas Hurricane Center has flagged now out in the Atlantic. And you can see the uh, this area here becoming more active. We've got a, a pretty good wave that just came off the coast of Africa. That looks pretty good. In fact, Hurricane Center thinks that has the best chance of development, about a 40% shot over the next five days. This one, about a 30% chance. And then the, the one closest uh, to the islands, about a 10% chance. So it's low in. But we do know that things are starting to ramp back up again after a lull in the action. And uh, the next named storm would be Fred, followed by Grace and Henri. And there's the list. We're actually behind schedule compared to where we were last year. But uh, NOAA and Hurricane Center thinks that this will still be a pretty busy year. 95 degrees tomorrow, 96 Monday. Can't rule out a few coastal showers next week, but in general, it's a dry uh, forecast and very consistent temperature wise. Mid 90s each and every day, guys. All right, Justin Horn, thank you so much. Time now, 919, 78 degrees out. Well, Sweet Sweet goes what? virtual what as it unveil, unveils hottest toy trends of the holiday season. We tell you what they are. That's still ahead. And speaking of virtual, American Ad Airlines is adding TikTok to in-flight offerings. We're going to explain next. Are you on TikTok yet? No. Liar. <laughs> Good morning, welcome back in your morning consumer news. Kroger getting into the restaurant business. The company is teaming up with Kitchen United to offer on-demand meal pickup and delivery from popular restaurants. They are planning to build ghost kitchens inside mm. Kroger gro grocery stores 
Each kitchen will offer food from up to six local regional or national restaurants. Oh, wow, it's a really cool design. Customers can select items from any or all of the restaurants to create a customized order on a single receipt. So this week, some of the messages you see on WhatsApp will be pulling a disappearing act. Oh, the app announced it is rolling out a new view once feature for photos and videos. The feature is supposed to give users more control over their privacy. Once the receiver opens the photos and videos, they will disappear from the chat. WhatsApp says the media will be clearly marked with a new one-time icon and will be replaced with the message reading opened once viewed. Hmm. All right, this is a story we've been talking about. American Airlines taking TikTok to new heights, free in-flight access for passengers. The carrier added the popular social media platform to its roster of free in-flight offerings. So people on select flights can get 30 minutes of free access without purchasing Wi-Fi. The purpose is to better understand what kind of content passengers want during their in-flight experience. To use the service, make sure your phone is on airplane mode, connect to the plane's Wi-Fi portal, and then click on the TikTok app for free access to the platform. So there you go. I like that. Taking TikTok to new heights. You're not even on TikTok. I know, but I like it for everyone else. <laughs> 924, 78 degrees out. Well, the list is out. Are you starting to worry about what are the top trending toys for this Ooh. holiday season? We have the details next. Is that atomic? Good morning, welcome back. If you're a parent or a family member, listen up if you're looking for the next big toy for your kids. Or if you're just a big kid like me. All right, Sweet Sweet is going virtual as they show off the hottest toy trends. Organizers say this season's trends are influenced by the content kids watch, oh. and it's all about what they are seeing on social media and YouTube. Another trend for the upcoming holiday season are toys that teach while also being fun. All right, so many of these toys lean toward programming and computer coding. I like that. Teaching, you know, education while having fun. Retro toys also expected to dominate this holiday season. Favorites like Tamagotchis, they are making a comeback as well as the classics. I don't know what this is. Spirograph, they just showed it on the screen. It's where you get the, it makes the little swirlies. Yeah. This could be a ridiculous question. What is Sweet Sweet? Sweet Sweet? I, you know, it's like a online thing. Okay. Right? Sure. <laughs> all right. Time now. I don't know all the answers, Max. <laughs> 79 degrees out. All right. Many schools start classes next Monday, so if your kids are in need of some supplies, don't worry. Still ahead, we tell you about a back-to-school giveaway happening today. Details coming up. Good morning, welcome back, and happy weekend. 9.31 this Saturday, August 7th. We looked it up, sweet, sweet. All they do is rate toys. It's pretty much the perfect job. It's kind of like a real life big situation. Ooh, right? Tom Hanks reference. Oh, love that love movie. It. All right, so Justin Horn, have you uh, started getting ready for back to school stuff? Have you visited the sweet, sweet? Uh, no. No, no, no. Uh, that is do your girls know about Sweet Sweet? I don't think they do, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> don't tell what, them. <laughs> what an incredible job, though. The, and I, they showed the Tamagotchis coming back. Everything yeah. else. Did you have a Tamagotchi? I did not. Oh. I did not. Uh, I knew people that did, though. <laughs> Sarah's so upset. <laughs> I, <laughs> thought you, I took you as a Tamagotchi guy. Quite the fad. Uh, no. Uh, pollen count is in. We have the latest numbers. Molds moderate, 630. Pigweed is low at 10. The mold number is down significantly from yesterday, so that is uh, really good news. It was up around 16,000 yesterday. Uh, these numbers should continue to fall with rain now out of the forecast. Uh, looking at the satellite picture, we get a better idea of what's going on here with the visible picture. Now that the sun's up, we can see uh, the visible satellite. And the clouds are beginning to break up. We are seeing some blue skies here around San Antonio. This cloud cover will probably hold on through about noontime, some off and on clouds, and then we'll probably see full sun by the afternoon, which means hot temperatures. 94, the expected high, southerly winds tend to 15 miles per hour. Heat index, by the way, will be up close to 100. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Well, San Antonio police are investigating two overnight shootings. The first one happening on the southeast side of town. This was a scene just after midnight on Lake Tahoe Street. That's not far from Loop 410 and South Foster Road. Police tell us they don't have much to go on, but they do know the suspect was driving down the street and firing shots. That's when a man was shot twice, according to police. He was taken to the hospital. At least 18 shell casings were found on the street. 
A couple of hours later, a bar fight ended in a shooting. It happened at Bentley's Bar on Broadway. Police tell us it all started during a fight inside the bar. Things moved to the parking lot, and that's when a man was shot twice, police say. Someone found the victim in the parking lot and took him to the hospital. The suspects took off. Now to the latest on the pandemic here at home. We are still in the severe risk level, and it appears to getting worse. Now we continue to see a rise in COVID cases here in Bear County. Metro Health reporting our seven-day average 1300 new cases. Now that's a 4% increase from just Thursday. Hospitalizations also rising 1000 COVID patients in our local hospitals, 273 patients in the ICU, 158 people on ventilators. As for vaccination rates, 63.9% of Bear County fully vaccinated. Well, if you're looking to get the COVID-19 shot this weekend, there are several vaccine clinics happening across the city. Metro Health and their partners are holding three clinics at Grace Lutheran Church from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., another at Las Palmas Library right now until 3 p.m., and the third one at Pre-K SA North Center from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. They are offering all they are offering Johnson and Johnson and the Pfizer vaccine. We have all this information listed on KSAT.com. You can also get your vaccine at your local pharmacy as well. All right, but if you are looking for a ride there, Visa Via's got you covered. If you're planning to venture out there, get the vaccine, but you don't have a way to get there. Via Transit offering free rides to and from vaccination sites across San Antonio. All you have to do is notify the driver that you're going to or returning from a vaccination location when you board the bus. Riders who are registered via trans customers must schedule the trip by phone or online. If you have any questions, just visit VIA's website or call them 210-362-2020. All right, the White House touting the latest unemployment numbers showing employers added 943,000 jobs in just July. ABC's Deidre Bolton is in New York City with a look at the gains and the question, will the growth stall in the face of the latest COVID-19 surge? For the moment, unambiguously positive. That is how one economist described the very latest report. So not only did we see more jobs added to the U.S. economy in July, more numbers as well for June, they were revised higher. So jobs grew across almost all categories. Leisure and hospitality and education were the two standouts. So leisure and hospitality, this is the group obviously that was the hardest hit during the pandemic. Bars, restaurants closing or being restricted last year. This category also including jobs added in the arts, entertainment, recreation. So it's truly a sign of life that they are hiring now in such big numbers. Next biggest category where jobs were added, education. Schools keeping more workers on the payroll. Many think in anticipation of an in-person school year for all ages. Now the caveat to this positive snapshot, the Delta variant. All of these strong June and July data points were measured before the Delta variants spread. Most economists agree this is really the biggest risk to growth. If more Americans don't feel safe outside their homes, they tend to spend less. And consumer spending, of course, is two thirds of our economic activity. So there are big implications on how and what people spend on. Speaking of spending for students, a little bit more leeway. The Biden administration extending pandemic relief for student loan debt through January 31st, 2022. The administration says it is the final extension. Department of Education saying the extension will give borrowers time to plan to resume payments and reduce the risk of delinquency and default. For so many students and families in and around San Antonio, this may be the last weekend of summer vacation and with the return to the classroom, well, comes a lot of questions. That is why tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., SAISD Superintendent Pedro Martinez joins us live. We're going to be discussing everything from COVID questions to expectations for this fall semester. If you have any questions you would like asked, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow at 8 a.m. to see if your question is asked. Happening today, members of an east side church are making sure kids have everything they need as they get ready for that first day of school. That's right. They've been gathering school supplies, everything from crayons to backpacks. And in just a couple hours, the Greater Faith Institutional Church plans to give it all away. Not everyone in this area might have the means or the needs to ha get school supplies. So I think it's a very beneficial resource. The body of Christ is a resource. And, it, and the church of God should be a house of resources. So that's what we um, intend to be. 
Along with school supplies, they also have food and fun activities. All right, the giveaway happening today from 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. The church located 3514 Martin Luther King Drive. The school supplies will be given out on a first come, first serve basis. All right, it is the first Saturday of the month, which means the San Antonio Food Bank is hosting their farmer's market. Plenty of locally fresh grown fruits and vegetables. It's an effort aimed at making all those fresh food items readily available to the community. Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Jonathan, it's a beautiful day to be outside. I know the market is getting ready to welcome guests. How's it looking out there? Sarah, it's a beautiful day indeed, and what a better way to spend a Saturday morning than coming out to a farmer's market. And with me, I have Melanie, who's going to share with us all the details, everything you need to know to come out here and get some of these delicious fresh fruit and vegetable items. Yeah, you know, every first Saturday here at the San Antonio Food Bank, we have a farmer's market here on site. It's open to anybody in the community. We just want to make sure that families are accessing healthy fruit and vegetables, and what better way to do that than come to the food bank, right? And so we have a 50-acre farm behind us, and that farm produces lots of healthy fruit and vegetables that we have here available for sale. Um, you can purchase them, you can use your EBT benefits, and then we also bring nutrition education and lots of fun games for kids to participate in while they're here. Awesome, Melanie. Now, I know that, you know, it's, it's a collaborative effort. We have a number of, of, of vendors here from raw honey to some succulents. How does that coordination effort look like? Yeah, you know, we want to support the local economy. And so by supporting local farmers in our community, it's a great way to give back to our economy. So we invite other vendors to come in. We actually, if you're a vendor, a local vendor, and want to participate at the farmer's market, uh, if you go to safoodbank.org, you can actually find all the information about our farmer's markets, where they're located, and how you can join. But we want to make sure that any organization, healthcare organizations, anything that's a benefit to the community, that if we can bring it all together in one place, it's a much better experience. Well, thank you so much, Melanie, for having us. It's been a real treat. I'm going to do a little bit of shopping myself, take home some fresh produce. I do need to make uh, maybe a Capri salad or something. I see those fresh tomatoes here. Guys, I'm going to be sending it back to you, Sarah. I know you have a garden at home, so this is familiar territory for you. It is, and I have so many peppers right now. I don't know. I'm, like, so tired of salsa. I it's also, like, every week. But oh. You didn't bring any in. Okay, well, now, uh, you know, just... Okay, now I have to bring salsa. Tomorrow morning, Breakfast of Champions. <laughs> Tomorrow morning, okay. Salsa. I hope it's spicy, yeah. Ralph, yeah. our director, said for the tacos. Okay. <laughs> All right, 941, 79 degrees out. Well, a robot making history oh, by terrifying. completing a 5K run. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Okay, that's next. And after the break, one of our KSAC kids, Rooney, daughter of Stephanie Serna, talking about headed back to school, showing off new school supplies. Take a look outside with live cam. 79 oh, degrees, looking beautiful out there at 941. Justin will let you know what your weekend forecast is when we come back. Good morning and welcome back. Can you believe it? For so many kids in our area, this is the last weekend of summer vacation. San Antonio ISD starts the school year on Monday. Lots of students, lots of families getting ready for the first day back to class. Well, this includes our Stephanie Serna's daughter, Rooney. Here's a look at her going through all of her school supplies. Hi, I'm Rooney, and I'm going to second grade. Look, a unicorn and And me and my mom been shopping for school supplies. I got to pick my hands and ties her. I think I'll pick this one. Panda is my favorite animal. You know how cute they are. <laughs> you want to cuddle with them? And here they are my panda, my notebooks, Baby Yoda. Yep, I like Baby Yoda. Of course. Cutest. And also our headphones, of course. Binky, huh? Go back. You see this girl right there? And these? They're enjoying these headphones. And pencils. And you need erasers just in case, too. Colors, of course. Now we have. Post it. You know, I don't know what these are for, but I'm sure they're for good use. Have fun with your school supplies, and maybe I'll see you at school. I forgot. Have a good school year. Bye. Just, you know, I yes. love how honest Rumi is. <laughs> I love <laughs> I love it. I don't know what these are for, but I'm sure they're going to be put to good use. Yeah, the post-it notes. Yeah. That's fantastic. All right, so Justin yeah. Horn, you got two daughters. Are you guys ready for back to school? Are they laying out their school supplies? I remember I used to do that, too. I'd mm. lay them out and be like, oh, yeah. look how pretty. Get them ready. Uh, no, not yet. 
I, I think they're sort of resisting a little bit, uh, trying to... It's really not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, it is going to happen, yes. <laughs> and, uh, it's going to be hot when we head back to school. So we're used to that, right? Uh, it usually takes till about September, October before things start cooling down. Uh, so it'll be shorts uh, all the way through the next, uh, well, probably next month or so as the kiddos head back. Uh, average 100 degree day, we usually get our first one June 26th. And I know we've shown this graphic quite a bit, but I think it's worth repeating. The earliest 100 degree day we've ever seen, February 21st. The latest, September 1st. We're getting closer to that number. That was back in 1985. With all that being said, there have been several years where we have never or have not hit 100 degrees during uh, the calendar year. 2007 being the last. Could this be the year for that as well? We have not even, well, we've got up to about 97. So I'd say we really haven't got close. We've got within three degrees. But we haven't uh, been on the, the cusp yet, and there is still not uh, any triple digits in the extended forecast, which is good to see. 75 degrees right now. We've got partly cloudy skies, southerly winds at about 7 miles per hour. Dew point is at 74. Cloud cover is there, but it's already starting to fade away a little bit. 82 stints and 79 rain off. It's a warm morning. 81 in New Braunfels, 77 burning stage. If you haven't got that morning run in yet, you better do it quick because these numbers are going to race upwards here over the next couple of hours. Uh, a little bit more cloud cover out over Del Rio where it's 80 degrees and some clouds off and on Kennedy to Victoria. There was a little bit of fog earlier too that has since gone away. Two points. When you start getting dew points around 80, that's about as high as it goes around here. We do have a dew point of 80 around Gonzales. Otherwise, everyone else is in the mid 70s. These numbers drop off a little bit this afternoon, but not enough. We're still going to be looking at a heat index, and there already is a heat index right now in places like Gonzales, where it feels like it's 88 at the uh, 9 o'clock hour. 87 is what it feels like in Kennedy. Uh, we have some heat indices in the low 80s out west. Uh, forecast heat index today, 101 in New Braunfels, 102 Gonzales, 101 Pleasanton. San Antonio will be near 100. As far as the next several days, you can bet that the heat index is going to be right there each and every day. We're moving into a very consistent pattern going forward. And today uh, we'll be in the mid-90s for highs. Sunny skies, southerly winds 10 to 15. Here's a look at the extended forecast as we look at the upper levels. And look, we're not going to have a ridge of high pressure sitting right over top of us. We don't have one of those heat highs over us, but it's close enough to where it just keep thing, keeps things pretty much status quo. There's no a rainmaker that moves through Texas to bring us any rain chances either. So this forecast is a pretty typical August forecast. 95 Sunday, 96 as we head back to school on Monday. There will be some coastal showers, I think, middle part of next week, but they'll probably be relegated to the coast. Maybe, maybe a stray shower or two as we get into Thursday and Friday. We'll be right back. Fly to fly not wings from when we purchase them all the way to when they're done and dressed. Starting out like our wings are all natural, uh, no added hormones, range-free birds. Jumbo. We marinate them for 24 hours in our own marinade, batter them up with some flour, fry them after that to a good crisp. We don't just take and put them in a bowl and toss them around and throw the seasoning or the sauce on there. We actually take and dress each wing individually. The bone-in wings are phenomenal. I mean, you can see people keep coming in. It is it's popping out here, man. But I want to do a quick little look at these boneless wings. Again, on our boneless wings, we start with uh, chicken breast. We take and cut them up, marinate them as well for 24 hours, and then we bread them with the flour, fry them. Now this seasoning here is our Rodney's Ranch. So I'm going to go in. I want to try this guy right here. Cheers. Thank you. Go for it. I love wings. Football can start up all the wings. Bone in. All right, so good news to tell you about this morning. All right, so if you want to find your inner Matt Damon, Max, and spend a year of pretending that you are isolated on Mars, hmm. NASA has the job for you. Perfect. To prepare for eventually sending astronauts to Mars, NASA began taping applications for four people to live a year in Mars, well, in Mars Dune Alpha. That is a 1,700 square foot Martian habitat created by a 3D printer and inside a building at Johnson Space Center in Houston. The paid volunteers will work a simulated Martian mm. exploration mission with spacewalks, limited communications back home, restricted food and resources, 
and equipment failures. Mm, all right. Next in the, uh, the scientific news of the morning, scientists found the one of the world's rarest species of a chameleon in Malibu. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Sure. All right. Chapman's pygmy chameleon, say that 10 times fast, thought to have gone extinct from deforestation, but a team from the South African National Biodiversity Institute and the museum, well, they found the animal in three forest patches. Oh, chubby. This chameleon. <laughs> Are you fat shaming? <laughs> it's cute. The chameleon blends into the leaves and only grows about two inches. Scientists say the ones they found are isolated within their own location, making it nearly impossible to breed. All right. Well, from fat shaming chameleons <laughs> to running robots, we just learned that this robot learned to walk, but is already competing in 5K races. Meet Cassie the robot. She is the first two-legged robot to learn how to walk and run outside a controlled manner. Just to be clear, outside of a controlled manner. I can't stop laughing. Cassie put her skills to the test in a 5K run on Oregon State's campus. Officials say Cassie was untethered oh. and running on a single battery charge. It took her over 53 minutes to complete the run. Hmm. Go, Cassie. Okay, we're cheering on robots now. 956, 80 degrees out. Well, it's been a hot summer, and one of the best ways to cool off is a nice dip in the pool. Tomorrow on GMSA, we have some tips on how to keep a backyard swimming pool safe and clean for a long season of cooling off. In the news you need to know before you go, two people dead and another in the hospital after a terrifying head-on crash on I-35 this morning. Take a look. This was the scene around 2.30 this morning. Now, police tell us they spotted a wrong way driver headed northbound on the southbound lanes of 37. Police tell us the man who was driving the truck got onto I-35, eventually crashing into an SUV head on at 35 in Eisenhower. Two women were in that SUV, both died on impact. That truck burst into flames. Now, officers on the scene actually were able to save the suspect, the driver, from the fire. He was taken to a nearby hospital at last check in critical condition. Now, the police officer was treated for smoke inhalation, but the suspect now facing two counts of intoxication manslaughter. And we'll now look at the forecast for climbing into the 80s now. We'll be into the 90s today and a more hot weather through the weekend and into next week. Thank you, Justin. Hey, guys, enjoy your tax-free weekend. Tax-free weekend, Justin Horn. Hey, enjoy Texas Eats. Starts, wait for it. Right now. Ah. Hey, it's David.